Hello, this is Michael McCarthy. In this video, we're going to take a look at using Ornatrix to create some very hard and clearly defined parts between very dissimilar guides. Now, usually, it's pretty important to create a good number of guides so that your hair can very smoothly interpolate. But in some cases, you may want to uh, have very dissimilar guides and uh, really uh, have a very hard part in between them. And this is the case with this uh, user file that was provided to us. Uh, a couple of users really wanted to get those uh, very hard parts using dissimilar guides and, and rather few guides as well. And in this case there's a couple of ways to do that and I just wanted to kind of go over them. This scene file is a sample file that you can get from the docs so if you want to follow along you certainly can. I want to show a few different options in order to do this. These are just splines and I'm going to add our OX guides from shape in order to turn them into a hair shape. And then I'm going to add our OX ground strands to ground them to this base mesh. So I'll select that base mesh, click on ground strands. Now I'll be able to add our hair from guides and that's going to give me hair in the scene. You can see we get a nice smooth interpolation between these guides. It does get a little strange and kind of curly and weird here in the middle and that's where you know really if you're going to do smooth interpolation you need to have a good sample set of guides and not have just a few in one place and then a few that are very dissimilar in another. If we just take a look at these guides you can see you really want to have some in the middle that kind of transition this otherwise you don't have a lot of control over it. But if you just want to do a, a real straight and hard part between these um, that's something that we could do. Now the first and easiest way to do this is probably to go down to the auto part section. So if you scroll down under our hair from guides all the way to the bottom you'll see auto partings and you can click on auto part and you can see that it will automatically part the hair based on the guides and the different shapes of the guides and you can adjust the threshold so for this we probably want a pretty strong threshold now uh, when you're doing this type of parting you may want to choose a different interpolation space too um, the default, which kind of wants to go for a smooth transition, may not be the best space. I recommend using Affine uh, or Segment. So I'm going to kind of stick to Affine interpolation, and you can see that we get a really clear kind of delineation between these guys, even with the simple auto part. So that's the auto parting option, which is just a quick checkbox solution. For a little more control, what you can do is just go into sub-object mode and create parts. So I'm going to uncheck auto part here. Uh, we're going to keep our affine interpolation because that will be important even if we're using our sub-object partings. And I'm going to go into sub-object partings and this is where I can create a part. So I'll turn off the visualization of this in the view and I'll click to create a part. You can just click on the mesh and then click again and that's going to start to create a part. I'll right click to stop and I'll create two more. So I'll create one here. You can create these anywhere on a mesh and you can certainly continue on if it's on a scalp or something of that nature. Here we just have a very simple scene so we have something like this. So this is the parts and this is what's going to inform Ornatrix where we want our parts to happen and if we bounce back out we should see those parts happening. And this will give us a really, again, clear delineation between where we want to have parts in the hair and those guides. Again, you want to make sure that you're probably using one of these two interpolation spaces uh, because others will maybe not. It'll try and blend a little bit more than you may want. And this is going to be a little bit more precise as far as interpolating between those guides and respecting the parts. Last but not least is going to be using a map. So when I go in to our automatic partings, you can see that we can set parting groups based on a map. You can also set it based on a channel, but we'll use a map here. So I'm going to just turn off this modifier so we can see what that map looks like. I'm going to apply that map to this mesh. It doesn't need to be applied to the mesh, but I just want to kind of visualize what we have here and basically what you're setting is a black and white map. So you have black here and where it's white next to it you're gonna have that part down the black and white threshold line. 
This one's maybe a little bit tight, but you can kind of see where we're going with it. Again, this doesn't need to be applied here. We're just doing it for visualization. It needs to be applied in here. So I'm gonna just kind of drag and drop this over here. Choose Instance, and let's pop that back on. So now what we're using is this map for interpolation. We'll go into the partings and make sure we've deleted these. And just toggle back and forth on our hair. And you can see here that while we're using our map, we're not really getting the correct interpolation that we want to. And when I kind of switch back between these, I get a little bit of a better setup, but not exactly what I want. When you are using a map, it's going to be important to ask it to use the UV coordinates so that it can get that information from the map. So when I check use UV coordinates, you can see that we really use that map as far as our partings go, and this can give us a good option to part our hair with. So there we go. There's three different methods of creating a very hard part between very dissimilar guides using Ornatrix. Uh, as I said, these actually three scene files are up on our documentation page, so if you want to download them from there just to kind of play around, you can. Uh, hopefully this helps you in your grooming with Ornatrix. Thank you very much.